Welcome back for another live tutorial. Today we are going to be learning how to make scratch art in Procreate. I don't know if you remember like when you were a kid and you would get a piece of paper and then like color all over it with crayon and then you'd like like do all these different colors and then color over it with black or like paint over it with black and then you get like something to scratch away. It was a really fun thing. I did a lot as a kid and um, it's actually like a fine art form. To, it's called scratch board but I don't know, I like pretending that I'm a child when I'm doing this. Um, it's just very fun and relaxing and you get to blend colors and it's really, really fun. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna walk you through two different illustrations and show you lots of tips and techniques. Um, we're also gonna be using layer masks. So if you've never used layer masks and you're confused about what they are, this will be a good one for you. So I'm gonna be using brushes from my new newest brush set scratch art sgraffito um and you can go ahead and download that from my website if you want it's at bardobrush.com um is my website <laughs> so if you want to grab those brushes you can and you can join us today um they are really awesome and i i created these brushes just to emulate real scratch effects so they really do look very realistic like as if you scratched something away um, a little bit about the brushes. There's 11 different brushes in this set and there's a bunch of different textures. We're going to be using a lot of these today so you'll get to see them in action. Um, and there's also these really cool quick scribble or quick scratch brushes which fill in areas really quickly. Those are really fun. So we'll get to we'll get to play with those a little bit today or a lot. <laughs> And I just want to show you a little bit of sample art. These are some art artwork pieces that I made with this set, uh, just to give you some examples of what you can do and like what different art can look like. Um, so these are some little butterflies that I did. Um, and the painterly, like the painting background, is something that we create with other brushes. So I'm, we're gonna be using some built-in Procreate brushes to do that, and then I'll give you some suggestions of other Bardo brush brushes that you can do that with. And this is another one of kind of like, I always like, when I think of um, scratch art, my mind always goes to like folk art designs and like natural things, flowers and greenery. So this is kind of like a composition that I made of like flowers and leaves and stuff. <laughs> And this is another one that shows um, what it looks like. I, a lot of the time I do like a light, light colors and then I put a dark, color over the top and then scratch away. And this is the opposite where I did a dark background and then I put a light color over the top. So you can do that too. And it looks really, really cool. And then this one is actually, I have um, a, I think it's like 31 page user guide that comes with the brush set, which, tucks, which teaches you like all about how to use them. It goes over what the brush, different brushes are and kind of what their different purposes are. And then there's even some tutorials built into it. And I have a step-by-step -step tutorial about how to do this one right here in that user guide. Okay, let's go ahead and draw. <laughs> I drew this one yesterday. Look like my little bear there, he's drawing. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Procreate. And the first thing I'm gonna do is start a new canvas. So I'm gonna go up to the little plus sign in the corner here and tap on that. And actually, before we get started, I just wanted to say, uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, feel free to put them in the chat. Jeff, my wonderful husband, is here manning the chat as always. Um, so he will um, throw me any questions that are relevant to what I'm doing. And if you have questions that are just general questions like um, about art or other Procreate stuff, we will do a Q&A at the end where I'll answer those kind of questions and you kind of pick my brain. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're gonna go up to the plus sign here and we're gonna tap it. Canvas size I'm gonna be using today is my favorite. Uh, I use it all the time. It's 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. I recommend making a canvas template for that. If you follow me a lot, it's the size I use for just about everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up again. It was 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. Okay. So the way that the scratch art works is we need to have two layers of paint essentially um, in order for us to do the scratch. So we're gonna start with what I call the underpainting layer. And we just get to like blend colors together and have fun. Um, and it's really kind of relaxing to do this. I, I really love it, you'll, you'll hopefully see. 
So our first piece is, I decided to do kind of these little fish. <laughs> I thought that would be fun. So let's go ahead and get into some colors. The first thing we're gonna do is choose our brush. So we're gonna go up here to the paint, to the brushes. And I'm actually already here. Um, so we're gonna start with built-in Procreate brushes for this first one. And the brush I'm gonna be using is oil paint. And you can find that in the painting set. So again, go to the painting set in your brushes. This is a built-in Procreate brush, so everybody has it, um, and choose oil paint. And then we're gonna go over to our colors. Let me clear out my palette. Um, and I'm gonna start with just kind of like, I don't know, like an aqua color. So I'm choosing an aqua color. I'm going with a fairly large brush size. I'm about like 38% or so. Um, and I'm just going to draw very loosely, kind of like a big rectangle like this. And I'm not going all the way to the edge. I kind of like seeing the edges when I do this. And I'm just going to lay some color down like that. Super messy. You don't have to fill it all in yet because we're going to mix in a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to go over to my colors again and maybe choose, I don't know, something bluer. The great thing about this is you kind of experiment and see what colors look good together. And sometimes colors that don't even seem like they look good here will look really nice once you do the scratch. So you can really play around with it. Like maybe I'll choose, I don't know, da, da, da. that kind of looks the same. Um, maybe I'll go a little closer to green. So right now I'm kind of choosing analogous colors, which are next to each other on the color wheel. And those always look really nice together. Like blues and greens will always look really nice together because they're next to each other on the color wheel. But you can also throw in some wild cards. Like maybe I'll go up to orange and I don't know, throw that in. The harder you press with this brush, the more like color it's gonna lay down. So if you go really lightly, it will do that. But if you go really heavy, it'll look like that. And which brush are you using right now? We're using the oil paint brush. It's in the... Um, painting set, built-in Procreate brush. All right, I'm gonna get some more blue. And I'm just, you can just go around and pick colors. And this is, this is good. Like we can always add more to it and you can keep going and adding more stuff as you want. Um, but what I wanna do next is kind of blend these colors together a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go to the smudge tool next. You can always come back and add more colors later. It's not, you're not committed, don't worry. <laughs> so we're gonna go over to the smudge tool and the, the brush that I'm gonna to use to kind of blend these together is also in the painting set. So again, built-in Procreate brush. It's called the damp brush. So damp brush, it kind of looks really textury. And again, we're using that with our smudge tool now, not the brush, the smudge tool. And this, if you go really lightly, it just kind of like pushes around the colors and blends them together so it's a little softer. So I'm just doing really light ch -ch 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 kind of mar like motions. If you do it heavy, it's gonna like blend things a lot more. So you're not gonna get, you know, you wanna keep some of these differences in colors, you know. But I don't really want much of the white to show. Not, not really, I kinda wanna fill it all in with color. So you don't even need to blend it a lot. And I kinda like leaving the edges kinda textured with the paint, you know, like so you can see the brush strokes and stuff like that. So already like that's looking pretty good. And like I said, we can come back and we can add more color to it once we put down our kind of scratch designs if we, if we decide we want other colors. So it's all like, it's always you can change it, it's great. So I think this is looking pretty good for the um, underpainting layer. So now we're gonna go ahead and add what I call the scratch layer. So this is a layer that we're gonna actually scratch into. So we're gonna go up to our layers panel, which is these two little squares. Tap that. Hey, and someone, real quickly, Lisa, and I, I apologize yeah. for stopping you there. Someone's asking which smudge brush did you use? It was damp, damp brush. <laughs> I had to check. Damp brush was the smudge that we used. Okay. So you're going to go to the plus sign and you're just going to create a new layer. So right now we have two layers. We've got the layer with our underpainting, which is all the like blendy colors, our lighter colors. And then we're gonna have another brush. This is gonna be our scratch layer that we're gonna scratch into. Okay. And I'm gonna go to my colors and I'm gonna choose, I think for the top layer, I'm gonna stay in the range of the blues um, for this painting. 
So I'm gonna go to like kind of a blue green, but I'm gonna go a lot darker. So I'm kind of like down here on my color palette. All right. And then again, in our brushes, we, on our brush, we're still on oil paint. So we're gonna keep with that brush. So again, oil paint. And we're gonna do the same thing, but not, not as like crazy with the colors. So I'm just gonna kind of paint over it. I'm using like lots of small strokes. I'm not like going like this. I just, I like the texture. And if you go with the bigger brush size, you know, you kind of get more of that brush strokey texture. And I'm kind of filling that in. And I actually really like it if um, you can see the underpainting layer like sticking out from behind. So I'm not like, I'm not like completely covering it like that. So I think I really like the way it looks. So I'm kind of trying to fill it in pretty solidly, but still leaving some texture, kind of like that. So really messy. I've, I've only done one color so far, but now I'm gonna go ahead and add another color in. So, or another value of this color. Value again is like the lightness or darkness of a, of a, of a hue, which hue is like color, like red, yellow, green, blue. So I'm not really changing it here, but I am gonna go like darker. So I just kind of moved it down and I choose a darker version of that same blue green color. And I'm just gonna like add in some stroke, like random little strokes like that. And maybe just for fun, I'll go a little closer to blue in my hue and do like a darker blue hue. I don't know if I like that, we'll try it. You can kind of experiment and see what you like, but we want overall, we want this layer to be fairly dark. Um, I, might, I think I might even need to make it a little bit darker than this, but I'm gonna blend these together. Um, just like we did on the previous layer, and then I'll decide if I need more darkness. So, like I said, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and blend these together. So we're going to go to the smudge tool, and I'm just going to kind of blend these together. So essentially what I'm trying to make is a pretty solid texture, you know, not, I don't really want to see a lot of the I want it to look pretty soft and smooth. And I'm, again, I'm doing a lot of little strokes. And um, the way that the smudge works is wherever you start your stroke, that color is gonna be moved. So if I start right here in this kind of lighter blue-green, it's gonna move that down. Oops, I think I missed it, but. Or if I start here, it's gonna move that color up. So that's kind of how smudge works. You can move colors around. And overall, this looks pretty good, but. Like I said, you can come back in and add more to it. So maybe I'll add, I don't know, a little darkness over here and go even darker. But you want it, you do want to have a good contrast between the underpainting layer and the scratch layer. So I think that looks pretty good. Sometimes it's fun just to blend the colors and play around like that. Oops, kind of got it. Yeah. And because we're doing fish, another thing that you could do is um, you could like do little wavy lines if you want, but <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. I just wanna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, messy is totally great for this. It, it, it looks awesome if it's messy. If it's too precise, I don't know. It doesn't have the same effect, so. Um, oops. Okay. So now we've got our underpainting done. And on a separate layer, we've got our scratch layer. So we've got two layers here. So we've got our lighter colors, a little bit more multicolored. And then on the layer above that, we've got our darker colors, um, which a little less multicolored, a little more solid. So now we're going to get into the actual scratching. Before we do that, are we good on questions, Jeff? Um, a couple people were saying that they didn't have damp brush. Where was, uh, where oh. was damp brush? Damp brush was in the painting set. You could probably, if you don't have that brush, I don't know if it, I don't know. I think it, that's an older brush. Oh, maybe it's, it's an older brush. It's like, uh, Procreate might have removed it. Darn it, Procreate. <laughs> well, if you don't have that brush, an alternative would be, so if you don't have the damp brush, an alternative would be just to, you could use the oil paint brush as your smudge. 
Um, stucco might actually work. You can see stucco is pretty similar to damp brush. Um, but try a different brushes with your smudge tool and you just kind of want to blend it a little bit. I liked damp brush because it, here, let me try uh, stucco. Uh, maybe make it bigger. Yeah, I think stucco would work great. Jeff, do you have stucco? I've got stucco. Okay, absolutely. stucco. <laughs> I have had Procreate for so long that I have all the like older brushes that I guess they took out in later versions. So there's like another one, like I think this Oriental brush. Oriental's uh, one of that was, yeah, the one they took out, which is actually a really cool brush with a, not so sure about the name, but all right. And then um, so it's a great question for those that are a little bit newer. Someone was saying, hey, I don't have the smudge brush. Um, the smudge tool is just right here. So it's not a brush, it's a tool. So you've got your paintbrush, you've got smudge, and then you've got your eraser. So it, it basically just smudge moves things around. It moves your pixels around. Um, and you can choose any brush as your smudge tool. And uh, Guillermo was just saying, um, hey, I downloaded those brushes from the uh, Procreate portfolio. So it sounds like you might be able to get some of those uh, yes. old brushes from the Procreate website. Yes. Too. Let, you know what? When I post this to my website, I'll put the link to that because I did that on another tutorial. I didn't know. I was using a brush that, that they don't have anymore. <laughs> So um, I, know where the, I know what you're talking about, and I'll try to put a link to that if, if I can dig it up um, on my website after this is done. Okay. And then just one last thing, because I think it's really awesome. A couple people were like, hey, I just use wet acrylic. Um, yeah. Which, which, is a, which is a great alternative, too. This, by no means, is the only way to do this. You can use, you know, just about any brush that kind of has like a painterly kind of feel that you can get something like this. So really experiment and play around with the different brushes. This is a really good way to just like, maybe get familiar with brushes you don't use all the time. Um, I'm In our next drawing, I'm gonna show you some of my brushes from my Bardo brush brushes um, that, that I really like to use for this. But yeah, play around with this. You can get all kinds of fun textures. Like there's so many things that you can do. So please, yeah, try and play around experiment. Okay, so like I was saying, now we're going to actually do the scratching. So let's go up to the layers. And again, we have our underpainting layer and our scratch layer on top. So one way that you could do it is you can use your eraser tool and you can scratch, scratch, scratch away. And that works perfectly fine. But I'm gonna show you a way that's a little more non-destructive. And non-destructive is a term that we use in digital art. And it basically means that you are able to undo or reverse things that you did. <laughs> um, you can go back. It's, you're not like committing. Like if you erase this, it's erased and it's gone. There's nothing you could do about it if you wanted to like unerase it, move things around, you know, like. So we're going to use layer masks to, to do our scratch art in a more non-destructive way. So what we do to create our layer mask is we're going to tap on layer two. It's the one with the darker colors, the one that's on top. So tap on that, and then right here, see where it says mask, we're gonna go ahead and tap that. So again, tap on it, and then we're gonna tap mask. And you'll see that a layer appears above it with a white, it's like filled in with white. And this is a layer mask. And a layer mask, essentially, um, you can, what we'll be doing, you'll see us do it in a minute, you draw into this, uh, this layer mask, and it is masking what's on this layer right below it. So, it's, it'll seem like we're erasing things, but we're not. We're actually just hiding things. So I'll show you in a second what that, you, once we do it, you'll be able to understand a little bit better. All right, so scratch art, the workflow is a little bit different than you're probably used to because we're gonna be using our eraser as our brush, and we're gonna be using our brush as our eraser. So don't feel super confused yet. It's gonna make sense, and kind of once you get into that flow of going back and forth, you get, you get, you get it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so, so to, to do our scratch marks, we're gonna be using the eraser tool. So we're gonna tap on the eraser. And right here, I'm already in my scratch art set. So it's called scratch art in your list um, with the little sun. And these are all the brushes. There's 11 different brushes. We've got, you know, different textures, kind of different functions. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff. We'll get in and show you a bunch of it, but I am going to start with Scraffito Smooth. 
And sgraffito, by the way, if you didn't know, it's a term, it's an Italian word that I think it just means like to scratch or to write with scratches. Don't quote me on that, but it, it refers to the technique in art where you um, scratch away uh, to reveal an under layer of paint. It's used mostly in um, pottery, like pottery, where they put a layer of glaze and then scratch away to reveal what's underneath. So that's where that term comes from. And it's just a fun word. When I heard that word, I'm like, oh, sgraffito. It's fancy. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're going to choose sgraffito smooth as our eraser, okay? And I'm going back to the layers because I want you to do something that might help you out just in case you end up being on the wrong layer. So if you take a finger and you swipe, let me do that again. So as you see, when we create a layer mask, we have two. We have layer two, which is our painting, and then we have the layer mask. And the layer mask is the one we need to have highlighted in blue. So you can see it's like a brighter blue and this is like a darker blue. That means that's the layer that's selected. That's the layer we're drawing into. We're not drawing anymore on the, the painted layer. We're drawing on the mask only. But as an extra precaution, I just like to deselect this layer so that I know I'm only working on the mask and I'm not gonna mess with that. So to do that, you take one finger and you just swipe to the right, bloop, like that. So now only the layer mask is selected, this layer is deselected. This is just something that will help you out and it's useful if we wanna move things around. So I just deselected that layer with a swipe to the right. All right, you ready? I've been blathering on for so long. Let's go ahead, again, we're using Scraffito Smooth and we're gonna start by, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and we're gonna draw a little fish. So to do our fish, we're gonna make like, kind of like an almond shape like that. So two curved lines to create kind of an almond shape. And then we're going to add a tail onto it. So for the tail, I'm trying to decide which side's the front. I'll do this side as the tail side. So I'm just gonna kind of go up like that. So I kind of went like a little curve out and then out like that. And you can make with the fish, it's fun because you can make it look however you want. You can look at a reference of a real fish or you can just do different fin shapes and sizes and things like that. It's, that's why I like fish, they're fun. So I'm just gonna try and make like a triangular you know, kind of a thing like that. <laughs> I don't know why I'm having trouble with this right now. So I'm trying to make it more pointy. There we go. <laughs> kind of a weird little fin. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time. Cause maybe I want it to stick out more and that's what's throwing me off. There we go. Okay, I'm struggling with these. So I've undid it a bunch of times. So that's what's great about digital art is that you can undo, you know, do a two finger tap and you can undo it and then redo your scratch. Like if you were doing real scratch art. Oh, there we go, that's what I like. If you were doing real scratch art, you would have to commit once you did your scratch. <laughs> okay, um, so we've got a fin, we've got like a little almond shape. Now I'm gonna start doing some of the little details um, so I'm going to switch my brush. I'm going to go to the eraser again, make sure we're on the eraser. Actually, before we do that, I want to show you what I just did on the layers. So if I go to my layers, you can see my layer mask now has the fish, like the little fish shape. Like we haven't actually erased anything from this layer. We've just hidden it <laughs> with this mask. And in a mask, um, anything that's white, you see. So white, I, I say like white is like a window. White shows you what's on the layer below it. But if you paint anything in black or you use the eraser tool like I did, it will hide it. Black block. So black is blocking what's in this layer below it to reveal what's in the layer below it. <laughs> if, if you need me to re-explain that, feel free to like let me know. But that's how that works. So let's continue. I'm gonna go back to my eraser tool and I'm gonna choose the, the Scraffito Scrape. So this one does a really cool kind of a scraping texture, like maybe you took like a fat, like a piece of cardboard or something thick and you did like a big scrape. 
And I'm just gonna, I like it because it's nice and thick. And I'm just gonna use it for kind of a line right there on the fish. Okay, just simple. And then I'm gonna switch to the, let's do the pin scratch brush. And I like the pin scratch brush. It's really nice and thin. It's great for details and it has these nice pointy ends like that. You can of course adjust the brush size if it, it's not like the size that you want. But um, I really like, I use this brush quite a lot actually. So I'm gonna add some fins. So I'm just gonna draw a line that goes out and kind of follows the curve of the fi fish's back. And then it comes back in a little bit. That's how I do my fins. That's right, so how I'm doing this fin. And then we can add another one, like a little one right there, kind of in the same way. And then we can also just scratch in some little lines on that fin. Ta da And let's do some on the bottom too. Maybe we'll just have one kind of on the back, kind of in the same way where it's going to go back kind of follow the curve and then come back in like that. And then just add some lines for detail. And we'll also do a fin here. So I'm just drawing like the little one on the side of the fish. So I'm doing a line like that down, kind of curving and then comes back up. So that's my fin shape. And then let's add in some scales. I'm gonna draw some scales. I'm using the same brush again, it was the pin scratch. And for the scales, you just draw some like scallops like this. And then you start at like the top of the round shape, like the top of the scallop, and then you draw one in between like that. Kind of like a brick by brick here where you kind of have to imagine it goes that way. And then like that. So you're kind of going in between each of them like that. And drawing scales is, it's, it's time consuming, but like, I think it's also kind of relaxing just to kind of draw on the scales, do something a little repetitive, it can be a little relaxing, I think. Maybe here, over here, it looks kind of weird. That's okay. Why, okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right if it looks a little weird. I'm like, I don't know what happened over there, but that's all right. As we get closer to the tail, we can start, we can start making the scales a little smaller. So I'm just again going in between the layer previous to it. almost to the tail. I'm gonna change my angle because it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. So, whoops, maybe make them a little smaller. And then almost done. There we go. So now we've got some awesome scales on our fish. And we might as well come over here to the tail and add some little lines. You can make it look however you want. You could you could make them squiggly lines. You could do anything because it's fish, imaginary fish. Doesn't need to look like anything in particular. Okay, it's looking pretty good. So I think what's been bothering me is the front of the mouth is like too pointy for me. I wish it wasn't so pointy. And you know, there's a couple ways that I could do this. I could erase it and redraw it. But I think I'm just going to use liquify, which is something that I use a lot when I just want to nudge things a little bit, just adjust them. So again, we're still on the layer mask. You know, you can see like all my fish design right there. I'm going to go over to the adjustments menu, liquify. And I like it set to push. That's the one that I use to like nudge things around. You know, you might need to adjust the brush size so that's big enough, but I'm just like pushing that just a little bit. I just thought it was like a tiny bit too pointy. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's how you can adjust if you need to. And because we were on a mask, 
Um, it didn't affect the it didn't affect the painted layer. If we had just scratched right into the painted layer, it would have nudged all the paint around, and that's why masks are great. They're non-destructive. We can edit things on the go. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go back to my smooth brush to draw the eyeball, and then I think I'll be done with this fish. So Scraffito Smooth is the brush I'm gonna use now. And for the eye, when I normally draw a fish eye, I draw it like that and then I put like the eyeball in the middle. But this is a little different because we have our light color. Um, we're like drawing with the lighter color essentially. So I'm just gonna draw like, that and then I'm going to fill it in so that this dark spot now becomes like the pupil of the eye. So I'm just drawing like a thick white circle for that. I hope that makes sense. So that's something to think about when you're when you're like drawing light color on dark, which is kind of what we're doing with the scratch art is like what's going to be light and what's going to be dark. But here it makes more sense that the center of the eye is dark. So that's why I kind of made this part light. Okay. Yay. We got a fish. <laughs> All right. So I kind of made it pretty big. I don't have a lot of room. I was gonna draw a couple more fish, which is great because now I get to show you how to move things around. So before we do that, how are we doing on questions, Jeff? Uh, we're doing really good, but I will say that uh, Charlene over on YouTube just said, okay, to be honest, you're the best, seriously. I wish you were my art teacher at school. Oh, I am your art teacher here, though. <laughs> And I'm so happy to be. I kind of, maybe in another life, I would have been an art teacher at a school, but I kind of like doing it from my house, so. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, cool. Well, then I'm going to show you how to move things around. Since we're working with the layer mask, that makes it really easy. And actually, real quick, just before, and this is actually what someone was kind of asking, can you quickly review the mask and the brush you were using to erase before you go on to that? Yeah, so we... We've used a lot of brushes. So we've used Scrapevito Smooth, Pin Scratch, Scrape. Uh, I think that's it for, for what we've used so far. And we are on the mask layer and we are just erasing or erasing with those brushes on that mask layer. So we make sure we're not on this layer. We're on this one with the mask, which is the white background. I hope that makes sense if that's what your question was. Okay. Okay. So um, because this is the only thing on the layer, I can just tap right onto the transform tool, which is a little arrow, and I can move it around. Could not do that if we weren't using the mask. So I'm just gonna like make it a little smaller, like that. Something like that, because I wanna draw a couple other, couple other fish. Okay, again, so we are still on the layer mask. That's where we're gonna be pretty much the whole time. Uh, let's go ahead and choose a different brush. I'm going to use the Thick Thin. So it's Graffito Thick Thin. And this brush I made to be kind of like if you want to have lines that get thick and thin. <laughs> it's got some pressure sensitivity. The other ones have a little bit of pressure sensitivity, but this one has the most. Um, so if you want to do lines that kind of go from thick to thin, that's the brush to use. So let's draw another little fish. I want to do like kind of like a little round pudgy fish. So I'm just gonna draw kind of like an oval that doesn't meet together at the end so that I can just draw a line there. And this brush also is probably the most uh, opaque, I would say. You know, it shows, it really erases a lot when you scratch with it. Like here you can see more of the, like this scrape brush. You can still see a lot of the top layer. This one scratches away quite a lot. So that's another way to use it. And then let's draw some little fins kind of coming out the back. This one's like kind of a more of a cartoony style fish, I guess. And we'll just do the, I'm gonna do, this one's kind of, I'm like into like little round shapes for this one. So we'll make kind of a round fin like that. So kind of like a, it's kind of a curved shape and then it comes back at the end. And then maybe a little round fin there. Two little round fins. And then I'll draw a fin here. <laughs> this one's really cute. And then I'm gonna switch over to that pin scratch brush to do some of the details. So I'll do kind of this. I like to draw my fish with like a line right here. Connect that a little bit. And then we'll do 
I'm gonna do some different scales. I'm gonna turn it this way. It's easier for me to draw when I turn at a different angle. So I'm kinda doing some like long scales. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I need to add some lines here so that looks like a fin and not like a scale. <laughs> so these are kinda like long and swoopy. Oh, kinda like that. Just a different look. You could even probably do scales that are like triangular if you wanted or more pointy. Just play around with it. Okay, there we go. So that one's got some scales. We're gonna do, I'll use the same brush to do the eye. And I'm pressing down a little bit harder and that makes the brush bigger because it's pressure sensitive. There we go. And the more that all the most of these brushes are a little bit, um, they're not completely, they won't completely erase everything. Like if I do a stroke there and then I come back over that, it erases a little bit more. This one is about two and it'll completely erase everything. So that's why there's a little bit of texture in here, which I think looks pretty cool. You can kind of layer on scratch strokes to scratch away a little bit more. Let's draw some lines here. And then in the fins. And uh, for this, this is the pin scratch brush. I like to do kind of like flicking strokes and that gives these really nice pointed edge. If you just kind of let go, you like draw and let go, it's gonna be a little bit more blunt. But if you do, whoosh, 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 it's a little bit more uh, tapered. So that's what I'm doing for that. Okay, and then let's do a little tail. All right, he's pretty cute. I like that one. <laughs> All right, one more fish uh, right over here. Um, I think I'm gonna do my smooth brush again, Scraffito Smooth. I'm gonna make this brush size a teeny bit smaller. You can adjust the brush size, like if it's up. I usually keep it pretty low because I like these thin lines, um, but you can make it bigger. It just doesn't look as good but it can be useful if you're working in a very large resolution canvas. So that's why I have that very large size. You can make it big, but I like to kind of keep it about that big. All right, so for this one, let's do another kind of almond shape, but we won't make it connect at the back. And then I'm actually gonna, here, I'll do it like this. Kind of like that. And then, so kind of an almond shape and then it curves that way and then curves like that to close it. And then I'm gonna add like a, maybe a rounder, kind of like a triangular tail like that. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Just having trouble with this one. That's why we love undo. It almost looks like a betta fish, huh? <laughs> All right, let's add some, I'm gonna do, my fins with a different brush, I'm gonna use that pin scratch brush. So I want them to be a little more delicate, I guess. And you know, why don't we make it wavy? Why not? Then it is kind of like a betta fish. Um, I don't have a picture of betta fish in front of me, but I'm just guessing. Kind of like this, maybe? <laughs> yeah, kind of like a little wavy line. So I'm kind of drawing two lines out like that. And then, sure, why not? And then we'll do kind of like a big fin here. We're making it up as we go right now. And I, I'm gonna do that line again because I kind of want something consistent with all my fish to kind of tie them all in because they're all different, but they all have that line. So that's kind of how I make them similar. Although I like the line connected to the fin like that. I'll do the eye while I'm here. I'm gonna add a couple more strokes to give it more texture. There you go, I kinda like how that looked over here. And let's do some lines. I'm gonna have my lines come in from the tail like that. It's another way I could do it. Before I had them coming out from the body, then they're coming in from the tail. However many lines you want. I'll do the same here. I gotta, uh, I gotta tell you this joke though, real quick that a galaxy pug threw at us. Uh, how do you make an octopus laugh? I don't know how. <laughs> With 
tentacles. <laughs> I have not heard that one. I mean, I am definitely going to tell it to my kids. <laughs> tentacles. I love a good pun. If you know me at all, <laughs> you know I love a good pun. We watched the Jungle Cruise movie the other day, and I was sad there wasn't more puns. I was like, we need more puns. Okay, for this here, I don't want to do scales. I'm actually going to do something um, a little bit different. I'm going to go to my brushes, and I am going to choose one of these quick scratch brushes. And I made these brushes to essentially fill in an area. Um, they're kind of like a way to color in, so to speak, an area very quickly. So I'm using the quick scratch dense, and I'll show you what it looks like over here. So this is what it looks like. I just do a bunch of strokes and it looks like you spent forever like to get this like really cool texture like this scratchy texture this is why i love procreate because you can like do things like this that like make things way faster so that's why i made that brush and then there's also medium so if you want it less dense and then there's sparse which is even less dense so you kind of get a little bit control over how dense you want your scratch to be very set and i thought it'd be cool to kind of fill in this fish it is a little, I'm gonna make the brush size a little smaller. It is a little like crazy because the brushes, the little strokes kind of go all over the place, but we can always erase anything that kind of goes where we don't want it to. So I'm just kind of coloring it in. And plus like we also like, I don't, I want it to look a little like imperfect. So, you know, it doesn't completely color in this little spot or here and that's okay. Like I like that it looks kind of imperfect like that. But see this one, I don't like that right there. So I'm gonna show you right now how you can erase. This is good that we can get into this part because it's a really important part. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now how to erase away scratch marks that you don't want. So we're actually gonna be using the brush as our eraser. So you're gonna tap the brush. Uh, we're gonna go to, actually I'm gonna tap and hold the brush, tap, hold. And that's going to choose, okay, starting over. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm on my eraser first. So I'm going to tap and hold the brush. And that's going to choose whatever I had as my eraser as my brush. So see, I was just using quick scratch dents. That's just a quick way to jump brush sets. That's really the only reason that I did that. Because I didn't want to scroll through and like find the brush set. <laughs> so that's why I did that. Okay, and so for the eraser, we're going to be using the Scraffito eraser. I designed this brush um, to kind of emulate the texture of the edges of the stroke. So if you erase things away, it would look natural. So the other important thing is that you need to have your color set to white. These layer masks, they only see black and white and shades of gray. So if I was to set my color to black, it wouldn't, sorry. It would, it, would, it would scratch away, and I want to erase scratches. I don't want to add more scratches. Okay, see that? The little black, I know it's really hard to see, it's so tiny. And if I chose gray, it won't even see red. Look, I choose red and it's like that color. If I choose gray, it's gonna be like a semi-opaque. It's not quite as dark as black. See, there's black. So that's kind of how it works. It, 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 it uses black, white, and shades of gray to kind of hide or mask things and if you use gray it's like semi-opaque they're a little confusing i do have a tutorial about masks if you want to learn more and we talk more about it um so i'll have to add that as like a link in the tutorial page okay so like i was saying you need to have your 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 brush as the scraffito eraser and the color set to white because essentially we're kind of painting over any of the black parts on this mask so do to do, do goodbye that little tiny stroke i'll do it one more time i just erased it essentially i just painted over it in white i hope that makes sense so i could you know you could come in and touch things up i don't use the eraser a ton because i kind of like it you know like i said to look you know not perfect but that's what you can do and we'll use it again in a little bit okay so i'm going back to my eraser tool now i'm done I'm done erasing. I'm gonna go back to my eraser tool so that I can do more scratching. Um, I thought it'd be fun to add some like bubbles and wavy lines. Um, I'm just gonna actually scooch it over just a little bit. All right, 
And now I'm gonna go to the Scraffito Rake brush. And this brush has three lines that, it's, it's a rake, it's a type of brush, and it does three lines like that, which is kind of fun. I, want, I thought it would be fun to do like these little wavy lines like that. Just kind of throughout just to kind of give the suggestion of water in a stylized way. Maybe one over here too. And you can adjust the brush size, like it'll be a lot bigger if you make it a bigger brush size or a lot smaller. I like it kind of right in the middle. So just kind of the suggestion of, of water, maybe one more up here. Awesome. And then last little detail is some little bubbles. So I'm gonna go to the pin scratch brush cause that one's great for details and I think it'll be good for some little bubbles. So I'm just gonna draw like three bubbles kind of increasing in size like that. And then I'll also draw a little like shiny mark like that. I'll do one over here. And I have a pretty light touch I'm using a pretty light pressure right now. One more, maybe one more. If I were to press heavier, it's gonna be very thick. You can also adjust pr uh, brush size with the slider over here, but. Okay, and then you need some bubbles too. Okay, here we go. So there's our finished fish scratch art illustration. You could of course keep adding bubbles and lines. You could draw in some more tiny fish. You can add to it however you want. I think these scratch art pieces do look really cool when they're, um, you know, it's, it's a very full composition with lots of little details, but you know, you can keep going as much as you want with that. Um, I did mention that you can, um, you know, adjust colors later if you wanted to your underpainting or your scratch layer. So if I go down to my um, underpainting layer here, one with all the colors, I can go back to my painting set and choose the oil paint brush, the one I was using originally. And maybe I like want to have like some orange where this fish is, or like some pink where this fish is, you know. Um, I don't know, you can play around maybe some green. Oh, that's kind of... You can play around with it and you can like add more colors to it. Maybe some more like bluer shades over here and play around with it. And, and you can see like you change up the colors just a little bit. And if I turn off this layer, you can kind of see what that looks like. And it's okay that these ones aren't blended in either. Like, see, I didn't blend these at all, um, but it still looks really cool. So there's our first illustration. Okay, do we have any questions about that before we do one more quick illustration? Um, yeah, Jeff, do we have any questions? How do you fit your canvas again on the screen? Uh, oh, do you, I think, do you mean, like if I'm zoomed in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just take, I'm gonna do it up here real quick before I do it. You take two fingers and you do a quick pinch like that, so. There we go. Doesn't work every time. You gotta make sure you're getting it. So a quick pinch like that will fill the screen. One more time. It's a very handy gesture I use a lot. Okay, any other questions before we move on? I don't see any yet. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to the gallery view. So I'm just gonna tap gallery and then I'm gonna create a new canvas. So I'm gonna tap the plus sign again. I'm going to use the same canvas size as before, the 3800 by 2800 pixels. Open that up. And this time I'm gonna do um, my underpainting and scratch layer using some of my brushes because I really like the way that they look. The brush that I'm gonna be using is Artist Pastels. 
If you have this set, I recommend trying it out. If you don't have this set, um, you can use the built-in brushes. Uh, or another option is my gouache paint box, which I know a lot of people have, it's very popular. The thick sticky uh, to do the painting and then the thick sticky blender to blend the colors. Those also work really well too. I really like those for doing scratch art. But today I'm gonna show you how to use the Artist Pastels. So, I'm in the Artist Pastel set and I'm gonna choose the brush called Toothy Pastel. I love the texture of this one. And let's see, I think for the colors, I'm gonna stick to mostly green since I'm doing, what I'm gonna be doing is this cactus illustration. So I'm gonna stick to some greens for that. So I'm kind of doing um, kind of a yellowish green, very light, I'm trying to keep the colors really, <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the colors very light. So I'm gonna do like a circle-ish shape for this one or maybe like a big oval. And you don't have to do, um, you know, you could cover the whole canvas like I did with one of those other pieces that I showed you, but I really like seeing the edges. Like these work really well also for like spot illustrations where it's just like, I don't know, like a little spot illustration. Um, I've got my brush size all the way up. So I'm just kind of like painting in some greens, blah, 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 like haphazardly, kind of like a big oval. And then well, let's get maybe, we'll go down to like some cooler greens there, mix those in. Da, da, da. You can do some big splotches of that. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll do some blues too. I'm gonna do a lighter blue than that, yeah. And then I also like some, some like splotches of other colors, like I was mentioning, like we could just throw in a couple splotches of pink, um, maybe some yellow, maybe a brighter yellow than that. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and start blending and then if I want to, I can add more. So I just kind of threw down some color using again, the Toothy Pastel brush. And to blend them, we're gonna go into the Pastel Blender set. Uh, these are actually, I'm not using the smudge tool. I actually designed these smudging or smearing blending brushes for the Pastel set to work with the paintbrush, with the brushes, not with the smudge. And they actually work so much better than the smudge with the way that they move color around and like deposit color. So we're using the brush and I'm using Toothy Smear. And if I come in with a really light touch, I can blend without like, um, let me see, I'm just kind of doing this very lightly. If you do it heavy, what will happen is it will deposit whatever color you have in the color picker, which is great if you're like, I need some yellow here. Bloop, there's some yellow and then you can kind of blend it in. So I'm just kind of like blending, you know, it's totally okay that it looks messy gonna look good in the end. So that's looking pretty good. I think I wanna bring in some more greens a little bit. I'm just kinda of trying to take away most of the white space because I want it to be full of color, not white. So I'm gonna go back to my Artist Pastel set, Toothy Pastel, and maybe do like a, I don't know, a yellowy green? No, too yellowy. Oh yeah, like a really bright green would be kind of cool. That's fun. And then I'll blend it in with the toothy smear. There we go. And you get this really realistic like pastel, like an oil pastel kind of um, a look and it, and it feels very, very realistic. Okay, so that's pretty good for my underpainting layer. I'm gonna do the edges a little bit. And now I'm going to do the scratch layer. So I'm gonna go to my layers and I'm gonna tap the plus sign. And I'm gonna stay with the greens, I think, for this. I'm kinda staying in a, almost an analogous color palette. So I'm gonna go to my greens and I'm gonna go maybe to like right in between the blue and the yellow. And I'm gonna get like a nice deep green like that. So there's the color that I'm choosing. And for, the, for this one, I'm gonna go back to the Artist Pastel set. So I have two sets that come with this pack. 
the artist pastels, which is all the pastels, and then the blenders, which is the other one. I want to do the oil pastel just for a change in texture. And this one has uh, a different kind of texture. You can kind of see the two textures next to each other. So I'm just going to, again, just kind of paint over it. And to remind you, we're on a new layer now. So we've got the one with all the colors, and now we've got our darker colors on a new layer. So I'm just going to kind of fill that in. Just have fun making strokes. We want it to be most, you know, pretty much filled in very solidly, but we're gonna add some other tones to this too. So that's pretty good for now. I've kind of mostly filled that in. And now I'm gonna get a darker green. We can even change the hue up a little bit, maybe go a little cooler. Throw some strokes down like that. Maybe, I don't know, what would it look like if we did, that's too light, some like darker blues? I don't know. Sure, why not? <laughs> we can always like paint over it and blend it and like keep changing things, it's okay. Um, but now I think I'm gonna wanna blend this together. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my brushes and I'm gonna go to the pastel blender set and I'll choose the oily smear, like that's, I made this, texture smear to match this texture brush. That's why it's oil pastel, oily smear, toothy smear, you get it. <laughs> so again, really lightly, just kind of blending those together, just to kind of make it look nice and smooth. I don't want to have any of these like harsh changes in color. And if I do, I can do not pick up my pencil and do it like this. And that'll do it a little smoother. Just gonna blend it around. And if I press harder, it'll deposit whatever color, again, I had selected. So if I wanna add a little darkness there, I can. Or if I wanna change it to maybe a darker green. So I got a nice dark green with a lot of fun tones in it. Just blending, blending, blending. Okay. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So we've got our underpainting layer, lots of colors, bright. We've got our scratch layer with the darker colors, lots of darkish greens and things like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and start scratching. So we're going to, again, we're gonna use a mask. We're gonna tap on this top layer and then I'm gonna tap mask. And that's gonna create this layer mask, which is all filled in with white. And then I'm gonna deselect this layer so I make sure I'm not, you know, accidentally drawing on it. So I'm just gonna swipe to the right. Okay, so just this layer is selected. All right, let's go to our eraser tool now. And I think I'll start with the smooth brush. I use the smooth a lot. Um, I use a pin scratch a lot. And then I kind of use these other for like specialty things, but that's a good base Place place to start. And I'm gonna draw a big cactus. So I kinda wanna do like, I don't know, a big fat one like that. <laughs> and then um, let's have an arm coming out this way. So I draw kind of a J shape or L shape. Kinda like that. And then I wanna draw one on this side, but I wanna have it coming out of the this side, I don't want to have it just on the edge. Like this one, this one's like behind this middle stalk. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just draw it like I want it to be. Kind of like that. And then we're gonna use that erasing technique to erase this little middle line here. So again, we go to tap and hold the erase or the <laughs> tap and hold the paintbrush icon, and that's gonna kick us over to the scratch art set and then I'm going to go to the Scraffito eraser. You can also just get to it by like scrolling until you get to scratch art and then choosing the eraser. And my color is set to white. That's important. Okay, so I'm using the brush now and I'm just going to erase that whole line. Just like that. Very seamless. 
I'm gonna go back to my eraser tool now so I can scratch some more. I'll draw like a little curved line. So you can see it looks like it's coming out of the cactus instead of like sticking off the side of it. And maybe we'll draw like one more, kind of like that. A little chubby cactus. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my pin scratch brush and I'm gonna add some lines down the middle. I know I've taught you guys how to draw cactus before, but I just love them. They're just really easy to draw and like it's one of those things that I find very soothing and comfortable. I know I, I try to push you guys to get out of your comfort zone a lot, which is very important, but Sometimes it's nice to stay in your comfort zone and just hang out there and just relax. It's good. <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> okay, so we've got some lines on there. I'm gonna do these ones. So I'm just like drawing a line down the middle that follows the curve of the shape. And then here they kind of curve out and then do the same. Let me do that again. And I don't have a super heavy touch with these lines. Again, if I did it really heavy, the line would get really thick. Ta -da. Let's do this guy here. Oops, I don't like that one. And the last one over here. Starting with a line in the middle. Line in the middle. And I just love, like, look at this. This blue and then this yellow, like how that looks so cool just popping out from behind this green. I don't know kind of magical. Okay, so we've got all of our lines and maybe we'll add some little flowers to the top. So for the flowers, I'm just gonna draw kind of like a big bowl, kind of like this. And then like a zigzaggy line, kind of cartoony. Uh, maybe one here too. Cool. Um, now I'm going to add some ground to the cactus, and I'm going to use those quick scratch brushes to do that. So I'll zoom out here. I'm going to go to the eraser tool, of course, and then I'll choose the quick scratch dents to do that. This is really good for adding in ground, um, I think, because I'm going to go a little bigger with my brush size, actually. And it's this brush is a little bit pressure sensitive, so if you press really heavy, it's going to get really big, and if you press really lightly... They're small, so you can control it a couple different ways with your pressure and also with the brush slider. So we'll do that again. So kind of have medium pressure here. I'm going back and forth like that. Super simple. And I might even come up behind the cactus a little bit like that. So it looks like there's some ground happening behind it. And it gets a little messy here, but that's okay. I don't mind it so much. Gives it that nice quality. I'm sorry, which brush are you on right now? Yeah, this was the Quick Scratch Dense brush. That's how I did all of that background. It's a tilted a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, do I care? I could, I could maybe transform, oops. Could maybe tilt it. Then the cactus is kind of leaning. Yeah, whatever. It can, get, it can lean. It's a leaning cactus. All right, let's draw a couple more cactus. We're just, these are just for fun, really simple. All right, I'm gonna get the uh, Scraffito Smooth Brush again, and I'm gonna draw one over here. This is gonna be like a, kind of like a prickly pear cactus. So you just draw like ovals, and then you have ovals coming out of ovals as many ovals as you want. Maybe we'll have two little ovals on this one and one here. There we go. And then I'm gonna draw some little prickles, like little, little uh, what are they called? Like thorns, <laughs> the little prickly things. I'm gonna use the uh, <laughs> Quick Scratch Sparse brush. So quick, quick Scratch Sparse, save that 10 times fast. And let's see if these, yeah, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And I'm just gonna draw like some lines, like two little lines. And those will give the impression of kind of some prickles. Are they called thorns? Oh, how do I not know this? Maybe I'm just spacing today. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna get, uh, I'll get my pin scratch brush and just draw some flowers on these too. I'm doing a different style flower, so they just kind of look like little curved flowers. Maybe one over here, a big one. I mean, this one needs one too, a little one. Ta-da! So we've got some little flowers over there. And then one more cactus over here. Um, I'll use my thick, thin brush. And this one's gonna be like a barrel kind of cactus, like a big ball type one. I think that's the barrel cactus. I, don't quote me on that. So I'm gonna start with like a, y, or a, like a thin oval. And then I'm just gonna draw a few curved lines coming out like that. And then a couple on this side. There we go. Don't want more on this side maybe? Nah, I think it's good. And then I'm going to get my pin scratch brush and I'm just gonna draw, I'm just using again that flicking motion for some little thorns. It'll give the nice um, pointy ends to our line. So we'll just kind of go around the edge. Again, I'm rotating my canvas to get a more comfortable angle to draw. And I think I need a line down the center here. I'm gonna draw a little, these are kind of facing right at you. So I'm gonna draw four little, four little thorns, spines, and then the edges of these. Get out as many thorns. <laughs> prickly things as you want. Or um, I, I, uh, someone was saying that uh, someone from Mexico was like, they're espinas. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that even sounds much better. Uh, espinas, that's so much fun to say. Which I guess would translate to like spine, right? It translates to thorns. To thorns, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> There you go. So we have, a, that was like a super quick little illustration. Um, having the like quick scratch brush really speeds up a lot of like not having to draw a ton of lines, but it looks like you did. That's what I love about them. Um, so yeah, there you go. All right. So do we have any questions about this illustration before we kind of wrap things up today? I'll drink some tea as we wait. Lisa actually drank her tea, you guys. Oh, look, it's like halfway gone. Come on. I drank a full cup before we started, so <laughs> don't you worry. And we don't have any questions yet. Okay. So. Well, again, we'll do it. Th throw your questions up, and especially if it's not related to this, we'll do a little quick QA at the end, and I'm happy for you to pick my brain. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap up. All right. So as always, I would love to see what you guys made with this tutorial or with this set. Um, if you're making other art, other scratch art with this set, uh, you can use the hashtag BB scratch art. Um, so please do use that. And then we can all see what each other has made. Um, you can see other people's artwork and things like that and get inspired and always like you should go comment on other people's art. Like it's a great way to build community within this community of artists that we have kind of built. <laughs> that was a very confusing sentence, but it's a great way to connect with others and show some love and we can all give each other love on our artwork and stuff. So um, you can also tag me, you can tag Bardo Brush, at Bardo Brush, and then of course my personal account is Lisa Bardo if you wanna say hi there. Um, but please do, I love seeing what you guys create. Okay, well then let's go ahead and take a few questions before we sign off for the day. Um, so if you have any questions, type them in. Jeff will throw them at me and I will answer them if I can. <laughs> uh, we just had a really good, uh, a good one. Do you have any tips for playing with thickness from the brushes while scratching? Yeah, good question. Um, here, I'm just gonna, uh, da -da, I'm gonna duplicate this one and clear this layer. Okay, so yeah, so a lot of them are, pressure sensitive. So if I go really lightly, it'll look like that. If I go heavier, it will look like that. So they do have pressure sensitivity. Of course, you can adjust the brush size, you know, down here will be very thin. 
Um, some are more pressure sensitive than others, like the thick thin is a little bit more pressure sensitive, especially at the larger sizes. Like that's when you can really see it. Um, I try like I try to keep them not super pressure sensitive because usually if you're scratching with something, it's not like a brush where it just like gets bigger the harder you press it. So that's kind of why they don't have a ton of pressure sensitivity. Sensitivity, kind of to keep it more like natural and authentic looking. But the thick thin is the one for for kind of adjusting the brush size. And then the quick scratch brushes do also have pressure sensitivity. So here I was really light, really heavy. So you can kind of adjust. And then brush size, of course. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Someone just asked, where did it go? I apologize. I'm trying to find that. Oh, someone's asking what Apple Pencil you use. Gen 2 Apple Pencil. I have the newest iPad Pro with the M1 processor and all the RAM. I upgraded recently, and it's awesome. Um, but, yeah, Gen 2. I know it looks like Gen 1. People always say this because it has this little silver thing. It's just a sticker, you guys. <laughs> this whole thing is a decal from dbrand um dbrand.com if you want to get it but yeah that's just a sticker it's not actually gen one people are always like how are you doing that i'm like it's gen two i swear <laughs> someone was just asking can you make several masks at the same time um i think what you might be wondering is like on this drawing here you know i did all of my artwork on a single layer um, so it doesn't really give you the opportunity to like work with layers like you traditionally do. And that's just kind of a, the way that this is, this type of thing. Um, so you can't really like layer on layer masks, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could probably think of a workaround, but it'd probably be really confusing. Like if you took one of these brushes... I don't know. Yeah, I, w I would know the answer. <laughs> be a little bit too confusing, so. Uh, can you show how you added the mask again real quick? Yeah, for sure. Um, so let me delete that mask. Okay, so pretend this one's not here. So this is the layer. Let me turn those off. Okay, so these are the two layers. So I want to add a mask to this layer. I'm going to tap it, and I'm going to choose mask. Okay, and then that's the mask layer. And the only other thing that I did do was I deselected the layer with the paint. Because the reason why is if you don't do that, like if I were to draw something here, like a heart or whatever, um, and I wanted to like transform it, look at this. It's going to move both the mask and the paint layer around. So if you need to move things around, let me undo that. A reset. There you go. You want to deselect this layer. So you swipe to the right. And see, it's not blue anymore. Only this layer selected. And now I can just move the scratch part. So that's a very good question. I'm glad you brought it up because I get to show you that. Um, yeah. All right, we got two people have asked now. I've got to ask it. Um, and it is do you have any updates on what you're going to do about Patreon? Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, hmm, how much do we want to talk about this? Let's talk a little bit. So, okay, so we're not going to do Patreon. Sorry to disappoint you. We are doing something even more awesome. Um, like we are working on something really cool, like a whole new way for you guys to um, watch my tutorials and interact with the content, interact with each other. Um, Ah, I don't know how much I want to say yet. Let's just say it's going to take all of the education that we already have, make it even better, mm -hmm. and give you access to tools and things that we've just never had the ability to give to you guys. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be an amazing community. So it's yeah. really about bringing you guys together and giving you more resources to learn. Yeah, absolutely. And like... A way for me to be able to give more of myself to you guys and like focus on you guys and um, interact with you guys in a more intimate way. Like we're gonna be doing some really fun stuff, and ah, uh, I want to tell you about it, but I don't want to like 
Give it, give it all away yet. Give it all away. But just know that um, hopefully by mid-September, the latest, we'll be launching something really yeah. cool. It functions a little like Patreon, but like in, insanely better than Patreon. Like yeah. We were looking at Patreon to do something like that and to give you guys more exclusive content and things like that. Um, and like do... Yeah. But it just, it didn't have the, it just wasn't a good setup. It wasn't a good setup. And I have very, very high standards for the experience that I want you to have when you interact with anything that I do or anything in general. Like I have very high standards about experience. And if it's not a good experience, I won't do it. So and I think more you're important, like we wanted better tools for you guys to learn. Yeah. So I think you're going to like it, especially if you like haven't watched all my tutorials there's gonna like it's gonna be a lot easier for you to now go back and watch them because I'm doing stuff. I'm doing lots of cool stuff and I'm working really hard and you guys are gonna like it. I hope. <laughs> Sorry to be so vague, but I am. <laughs> All right, you guys. I think we're good on questions. Uh, we'll do one last one. Oh, one more. Do you have any tips on drawing the flower of the cactus? Sure. All I did, I did two different ones. So if this is the cactus, I just did kind of like like a little let me get a pin scratch. I, I did like a little bowl shape like that and then like a zigzag. So it's like a very flat flower, which some of these cactus, they have these like really flat, wide flowers. And then the other one I did was like just a little, almost like a little cartoon hand. <laughs> like, and you could do flower, I don't know, you could do, you could do them in so many different ways. You could do it like that. And this is like, if you're like, huh, I don't know how I want to do this. Like, seriously, just sit here drawing, like, however many flowers you want to do and experiment with different, I don't know, styles. Oh, another way you could do it is, like, with little swoopies like that. That's another fun way. And you get kind of this cool, like, pokey <laughs> style. So yeah, just play around with a bunch and like see what you like. That's how you that's how you figure these things out. Like try a bunch of different things. So all right. Um Thank you guys. I think we're good. Again, I'm Lisa Bardo. Uh, my business is Bardo Brush. I make awesome brushes for Procreate as well as lots and lots of educational content such as this. I love teaching. That's probably my favorite thing. I love making tools. I just love enabling people to be creative. It's what fuels me in life. I love it. it. Makes me really happy. So that's what I do. And I also run the Making Art Every Day Challenge, which is a series of daily drawing prompts and motivation. And we have a really awesome community that's participating in that that has just grown and grown every year. It's the third year we're doing it. It's completely free. So if you want to join in and follow along and do the prompts, like check out, uh, you can learn about it at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. It's awesome. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.